Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to our homestead. Welcome inside of our solar room. It's always really important for me to find space saving options because if you live in a small home like I do out on a country homestead, then space sometimes can be at a premium. I've got a really cool new solar battery to show you today that's going to save me some space and hopefully it will help you. Let me show you what that is. First, let me tell you to initially save space, we switched over from the server rack style batteries to these wall mount style batteries. And that freed up a ton of floor space. But now since we moved our inverter outside, we've got some room here on the wall. And that's where this new battery can be mounted. This is the new EG4 wall mount 100 amp hour battery that is 5.12 kilowatt hours, 48 volt battery. You can see the size difference between the two styles of indoor wall mount batteries. This one's 280 amp hours, this one's 100 amp hours. It's essentially the same size as the 6000 XP inverter. It's about 18 inches wide and 25 inches tall and seven inches deep. So similar to the large wall mount battery, what's really cool is internally, these have two 150 amp bus bars. Then your battery cables have these Amphenol connectors that just push on. And then your battery cables have an open end on the other end. And that is so you can either put lugs on it to connect to the 6000 XP directly or just cut back the insulation and insert them into the 3000. And then of course it comes with a communications cable and it always comes with concrete anchors. But for us, we don't have concrete walls. We've got wood walls, so we will have to find some mounting hardware for this. And for mounting options, it's gonna be very easy. Like the large ones, this does come with a removable bracket that goes on the back and you can put this on your wall and then slip the battery over the top of the bracket. So we're just gonna remove the bracket and mount it onto our studs through these four holes. Now somebody in a previous video had suggested in the comments that why don't I mount one of these on my walls? Well, you don't wanna do that. Hanging 280 pounds on a two by four stud wall is not a good idea. The best place you're gonna mount those is on a concrete wall or a concrete block wall, potentially on a two by six wall if it's 16 inches on center. But for us, we have just a regular stick frame home made with two by fours. And that's what I think a lot of you have as well. So I think this is gonna be a great option for many people out there. This does also come with rubber feet on it, which is nice in case you do wanna set it on the floor. One use case for this is to make a small ESS like this or energy storage system. So imagine the conduit box that comes with it in the middle and then a 3000 EHV or a 6000 XP just right on top of that. It creates this really slim, small profile that can pretty much go anywhere in a house. And then of course you can parallel more of these batteries together. So let me talk about a few more specs for this battery. So this battery has both high temperature and low temperature cutoffs, and you can charge it and discharge it at 100 amps. Now it is recommended that you only discharge and charge at 50 amps but it will take that 100 amps. Additionally, on the inside, it has fire arresters. All these new batteries now have fire arresters on the inside, which is really cool. And then for certification standards, if you're interested in that, it is UL 1973 and UL 9540A certified. And I know you're wondering about the warranty. It's a 10 year warranty at 6,000 cycles at 80% depth of discharge. On the side of the battery, we've got a 125 amp Nader breaker, a shunt trip, and this is how you turn on the BMS. So let's flip this on. We're gonna turn the battery on, and I'll show you the front screen. On the front screen, you've got a lot of information here. You've got a state of charge indicator. You've got the current voltage and current, and of course, time and date and all of that. You've also got a state of charge indicator over here on the screen, which is much more accurate than that. You've got an alarm sensor. It tells you here if it's running correctly. You can see what firmware you have. And then you can see what each cell is at here. And you can go through all 16 cells. You can see the temperature, your uh, battery temperature and the cell temperatures, and then return home. Now, if you're going to use more than one of these batteries and parallel them together, they do sell special paralleling kits for the 100 amp hour batteries, just like they do for the larger batteries. 
Now let's mount this to the wall and get it connected to our external bus bars which wire into the rest of our system. And for that, I'll put some lugs on the end of this. But I'm gonna make one important point of information after I get this up on the wall. So make sure you stay tuned for that and it is really important, you don't wanna overlook it. In putting this bracket up on the wall, I did wanna mention a quick tip that I hope helps you out. Lag screws are great, but the head on them is kind of small. So what I like to use are these structural screws. They have a much wider head on them. And when they are going into the mounting holes on your brackets, I think it holds much better than a lag screw. If you can find shorty structural screws like this, then go for it. I'll leave a link to some that I use in the description below the video. If you're interested in solar products like these, I do have a very special coupon code in the description below the video. If you use our link and enter that code, you'll get that discount. I also have listed down there every single tool and every single part and piece for our entire system. So check those out too. Now to get these attached to our external bus bar, I'm gonna to have to put lugs on them. I've got some four gauge lugs here and this is a really great cable stripper. I'll leave this in the link below the description as well. Just gonna run it around the cable like that, pop it off. If you're gonna be doing this a lot, I recommend getting a hydraulic crimper. These aren't that expensive and they are really, really handy. We're gonna put some heat shrink on here first and then put our lug on. Make sure there are no little wires sticking out, no little strands. We're gonna set it inside the jaws of our crimper and start pumping it until it crimps it on there. Beautiful connection. Now I'm gonna slide up my heat shrink and use a heat gun to shrink that on there. Okay, we've got it up on the wall and our cables are connected to these two external bus bars over here. Those are the same bus bars that are connected to our charge verter. And those bus bars are connected down into the center large 280 amp hour wall mount battery. Now that one important point that I need to make is this is for testing purposes only. If you wanna put wall mount batteries in conjunction with these larger 280 amp hour batteries, you will need to have three of these. While, yes you can connect different capacity batteries together, it's usually not recommended. So keep that in mind when you're mixing these two capacities of batteries together. Additionally, if you've got the 100 amp hour server rack batteries and you have the new 280 amp hour wall mounts, then make sure you have three of those. If they are EG4, they will communicate with one another, so that's not an issue. What arises is confusion in the inverter about the charging capacities of both. I'm not going to dive into the specifics any more than that. Just make sure if you have one of these batteries, you've got three of these. What do I love about this? It's form factor. If you are starved for space, then it's going to be able to fit into some really tight spots. And that's the option I wanted to present to you today. It's really a blessing that we have more options for different sizes of batteries on the market today, when just a few years ago, there weren't that many. I love that companies like this are continuing to think about their customers' different use cases and modifying their form factor to fit in different spaces and different places. It's really a great time to be looking at solar and DIYing it yourself. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below the video. Now go check out this video right here, which is the installation video for this 12,000 XP off-grid inverter, which can take a massive amount of solar into it. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.